So over Christmas, uh, we had our nephew at our house, uh, and he just turned one. And uh, for Christmas, he received some of uh, these little guys. These are uh, VTech Smart Wheels. Um, and uh, look at they sing and make music and stuff. Um, I don't know. Nope, stop. Well, there's no way to stop it. But, um, these go on this, like, whole system, and there's tracks that they can go on, and, uh, um, uh, and there's something interesting about them that, uh, I will show you after I remove them from this thing. Which, oh, so far so good. Thank you for singing to me. Alright. Oh, you won't be safe from harm. Okay, let's start with the fire truck. On the underside of these things are these uh, eight contacts and the ninth one back here. Um, and uh, they have these, I can't remember what they're called. Some kind of socket that you stick this into and it, it does different things depending on where you put it. So you put it in the parking spot and it makes this, I'm going to sleep sound, and you put them in the gas station and I, I can show you that one because I remember the, the contacts for that. Uh, that's, there we go. So that's uh, when you put the gas station and when he rolls off. All fueled up to fight the fire. See? If I can do it. So there's all these different kind of contacts there, and they, I think three goes, whoa, yeah. Um, so there's some interesting uh, things I've discovered with this. Um, there's eight contacts, which would be 256 possible combinations, but they work bi-directionally, and it seems like the middle two... Um, tell the car which direction it's pointing in. So only one of the middle two will be on, uh, on at any given time. So it's either it's either that one or that one. Never are both middle contacts pushed. Um, I'm still not 100% sure why this back one's on because most of the messages will work without pushing that one. Um, but most of the sockets a car sits in has that. So the first thing I tried was holding down all the buttons and turning this thing on. So I held down the 8, that one, and turned it on. Huh. That's different. So the other cars would play kind of their signature sound twice and then sit in this state, which now it's it's it, it's unresponsive. And it'll sit there blinking, doing nothing, um, until I hold this down, I think was the key. Let's wait and see. Oh, right. there's nothing. So that one's, it's interesting. That got my got me thinking there's something going on here. Um, so then I, I kept futzing around and I found, I don't know why I didn't find this one first, that if I hold down the front and the bottom and turn it on, it makes some tones. And then it gets really interesting. So it makes that tone when it first turns on. And then every time you push the button, it makes that tone. Um, and then, oh, this is, so this, oh, that was different. That's really interesting. So they seem to behave differently from uh, the models I was playing with earlier. So that's something's going on there. Huh. Um, the other thing I know is if I push that one, it gets stuck in this state now, that every time it just does that. Um, there's two different messages, I guess, that are played. That one's new. That's interesting. Um... So I, I'm, uh, my speculation is that this is some kind of um, maybe factory debug mode so that they can 
test these things, make sure they've been loaded up with the right language. And uh, oh, I should say, I did uh, run this through some analysis, um, and that's an FSK uh, bitstream. Okay, so here's a, a look at the sample data uh, in Audacity. So I switched it from you know, the usual waveform view, which is that one, to the spectrogram view. Um, and uh, you can see very clearly uh, the frequency shift keying. I, uh, I noticed something kind of hilarious. I don't know if you can know it's off the screen. These are 22 millisecond long samples, which works out to 45.45 baud, which is exactly what a teletype machine uses. Um, so I thought that was a little weird. But the, the frequency shift, um, that's one kilohertz. And let's see if we can scroll. Of course, Audacity doesn't scroll with the scroll thing. <laughs> yeah, it's one kilohertz and three kilohertz. So that's the tone that it makes when it starts up. Um, and then elsewhere in my recording here are some of the other ones. So this is uh, the front after holding down in debug mode or whatever it is. Um, this is what the front button outputs. Um, so you can see there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bit units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, is that eight? Yeah, eight. Uh, so the front and the, everything seems to be repeated twice. So that the front button repeats that sequence two times. Uh, which you can tell just by just by the pixels. Um, so, I mean, uh, this could very easily be transcribed to binary. That's one one zero one 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 zero one zero 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 one zero one zero. So you know the the easy pickings are maybe this is some kind of ASCII data or something, um, but the high bit is set. Uh, which says it's not. Um, so it, it looks like it's numerical data. I mean, they're numbers. I'm not going to bother correlating them right now. Uh, so that's the front button, and here's the tail button off of, I can't remember which one I did first. Um, but it's the same, same deal. Three different bytes repeated three times. I think they're different. Yeah, three different bytes repeated three times. Oh, we can just... Well, it's like the whole thing. Um, and then the other mode was that one where I push the button and do stuff. Uh, and that, again, is three different bytes. Now, is that repeated? I don't know. I haven't looked at that one because I didn't know about that one. Uh... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh -huh. It appears to be the same deal. Three repeats, or two repeats of three bytes. I push the button twice, so that shows up twice. And then the other one was that where I basically get the unit in anything I press produces this sound, which is a binary one. Um, so that's one of them. Uh, I pushed that a few times and then started up. See, it's me talking to remember what these clips are. Uh, oh, that's a startup sequence of a different one. And different data. Um, this is the tail switch, I think. And then this is that more complicated one. I guess I repeat that a few times. And then, oh yeah, stuck mode, which again just produces a single bit. So the other thing I wanted to check was the bit rate. That's 22 milliseconds again. So that's 45 baud, which kind of feels like a bit of a, an inside joke. Uh, and then here is the last vehicle start up um, uh, it looks like the same sequence for the front button I can't tell 
that's the tail switch. Uh, and then that's that other mode. So I don't know, there's a, oh, I want to check the bit rate on that just for curiosity because I noticed some of the other ones were slower. And that's 22, 23 milli, 22 milliseconds, so 45 baud again. So that's what those things are doing. I don't, I don't know what to make of it. So let's try out some of the other cars. We got, yes, I bought these for myself. <laughs> my nephew will be receiving these as a gift when I've done with my Frankensteinian experiments. Um, but I had to stop my Christmas time experiments or my family would kill me. Um, Cause it is kind of annoying listening to this over and over and over again. So I'll move the fire truck see if the police car makes any different sounds. So we'll just put it into, we'll call it FS, whoop, off, FSK mode, which is that one, that one. I wonder if that, Hmm, I'm gonna have to look at these waveforms after I'm done. Um, now is that different than what this guy's saying? Sounds the same to me. Uh, oh, helicopter's on. And we'll do this guy too. There's a lot of combinations here. Really, I haven't fully figured this out. This is more of a, an invitation to experimentation. There we go, isn't that creepy? Okay, let's take one of these apart. Oh. Two batteries. Surprisingly, no weird screws. Well, uh, the reason I wanted to take this apart was to figure out if, uh, how many of these contacts were actually contacts and how many were just dummies. There's a uh, you know, usual glop top under here, but it's a pretty big glop on top. What? Oh, the surprises. So there's something here. How did I overlook this? Huh, there's a, it looks like there's a wheel sensor. I don't know if it's, um, whether the wheel has weight on it, whether it's on the track or whether it's rotating. Um, what else have we got? There's the power switch, that's three. And then these front, what? So up top, there's just the requisite goodies. Um, there's the buttons and the LED for the the front dude here, and then a little speaker. There's this weird red thing. Let's go deeper. Hmm. Hmm, doesn't want to come apart that easy. It would appear to be a lot more complicated. Oh, oh. So it looks like these have a common chassis. They do. And if you can see under here, there's uh, where the, this parting line is. There's a common chassis that I'm guessing is the same. And then they can slap different bodies on, but it just means making one chassis. I can't get this thing apart though. That says conf right there. What does that mean? And that's tied to the tail switch. Why is that called conf? This thing is surprisingly delicate for a toy. So that actually looks like it's silver plated. But the contact associated with the wheel, 
the wheels have, if I can show this, uh, a lobe on them, basically like, like a cam lobe there. Um, it's on all four wheels, I'm guessing just because it's cheaper to put it on four. Oh, there. Well, one fell off completely. So you can see there's that kind of cam on the wheel. Um, I'm guessing those just plop in. Yep. That wheel comes over this and actuates this super fine contact here. Um, I mean, I guess it's it's never... There's no way to to hammer on it because it's kind of all buried inside here. But anyway, that's interesting. So that it, it knows when the car is being rolled through that cam contact. So I was wondering if they'd actually there a close up of those. If they'd actually plumbed all eight of these contacts in, and it turns out the answer is definitely yes. You can see them there when I press them. Each one of the eight actuates. A little contact on the board so there are eight separate contacts uh, plus the wheel plus the tail sensor so that's 10 inputs to this thing so there's a, a lot of room to explore maybe a close-up of the board here thought I'd uh, catch a image of that contact as well. Another just a little plated pad on the circuit board. So that's the, the tail switch contact. It's yet another thing that I can break if I'm ham-fisted. I had said something about these bottoms being universal and they just drop them in. But I changed my mind because I noticed beside the tail contact, are we in focus here? There's these bumps, and they're different. Each vehicle has its own configuration. So they've got some bi-directional communication happening here. I'm guessing this is like their their vehicle ID so that um, they can create a toy where you put this in and it says, Hi Frank, how are you doing? And Frank will talk back. Maybe through these, there can be, maybe it'll... You know what I'm trying to say here? You put this down, the thing knows that it's got Frank the fire truck. And then it can push on these contacts and elicit responses from Frank in response to what it's saying. And make it seem like they're interacting. Um, the neat thing is, is that one of the, the sounds these make, which I can't remember the, the sequence for it, is a car wash. Uh, and uh, you can take toys that were made for a different set and stick them in the set with a car wash, and they know how to make car wash sounds. So they're they're pretty crafty. Well, that's everything I've discovered with these things so far. Um, you know, if you're curious, go ahead and get yourself a set uh, and see what you can find. Um, there's a lot of input on these things, and they, there's definitely something going on. They definitely have a, uh, a number of modes of operating. Um, if you're a VTech employee, just throw an anonymous comment in and let me know what's going on here. Uh, uh, otherwise, yeah, uh, that's kind of cool. That concludes this adventure. Um, get the old thumbs up or a, a, a comment. I do appreciate any kind of comments. It kind of makes me feel like I'm not just talking to myself. Hit the subscribe button if you think this stuff is interesting or don't. Uh, and if you don't, Frank here. Frank gets it. Yeah, explain that to my one-year-old nephew why he only gets a helicopter and a police car and where, uh, where Frank the fire engine went. Huh? You want to see that video? No, you don't. When there's a fire, I move quickly putting up the ladder Focused fire truck. I'm gonna need help if you don't participate in this video.